If you're thinking of quitting your job, setting up and moving on to a sailboat to sail away, there's a few things you should know. Here's seven boat life secrets that we have learned after cruising for nearly three years on two different boats. Before you set off searching for your dream sailboat, it's important you understand that no boat is perfect. It doesn't matter how hard you think about it or how amazing the model you settle on is, every boat is a compromise. It could be that the sugar scoop, which is so great for going for a swim and boarding the boat, makes a terrible splashing noise in the slightest swell and keeps you awake. Or it could be that a double ender shape is terrible for med mooring. A perfect sailboat simply doesn't exist and every boat is a compromise. Don't despair though, you can make an informed decision about what kind of compromise you settle on. The key is to dig deep. Talk to people who own the model you're interested in and find out what the most common problems or pet peeves are. Make a list of pros and cons based on people's real life experience and see if you can put up with all the cons before getting too excited about the pros. It's important you do this, so once you reach a decision, the boat you choose is the perfect one for you. Living on a boat changes you. You will learn more and more about sailing, boat maintenance, the weather and the sea. You will find it hard to talk about anything else other than boats and cruising when you meet new people. You will get used to having slightly lower hygiene standards because you can't use as much water on a boat. You will slowly adapt to being flexible with your plans. You may become a little more outgoing because you need to be if you hope to meet new people while sailing. You will become part of the cruising community and you will naturally be inclined to help strangers when they're in trouble. You will learn that if you put your mind to it, you can achieve almost anything. But boat life also won't change you. For the most part, you'll be the same person with the same personality and history. If you're trying to escape from some problems by going to sea, you won't be able to. When you're on a boat, especially while you're sailing, you have countless amount of time to think and reflect. You can't escape from yourself, you're still you. Living and traveling the world on a boat sets you free from a lot of things. A full-time job, a fixed residence, house maintenance, most of your bills, gym memberships, sales calls, etc. You get to travel on your home full-time, live off-grid and reach places most people can't see. However, it's important you understand that living on a boat doesn't make you 100% free. You fully depend on the weather, wind and sea conditions. These dictate where you go. If you can go to shore, if you need to move anchorage in the middle of the night, if you can meet up with people on land, if you can sleep and more. It's hard to explain this to anyone who isn't a full-time sailor. You can only fully grasp it once you live on a boat all year round. A bigger budget to hide in marinas for bad weather can help minimize the inconveniences of this reality. Try and embrace it. Learn to love being in tune with the seasons, observing the changing weather, interpreting the forecast and depend on the wind, even if sometimes it can be scary or unpleasant. This is the small price we live aboard cruisers pay for being free from everything else, so we're more than happy to pay it. It's a fair trade. Plus, the scary times are what makes us truly appreciate the good times. The highs couldn't exist without the lows. Buying a new boat doesn't mean she will be trouble free for years. We personally met various people who bought brand new boats built especially for them or ex-boat show boats that had hardly ever been used and within six months of ownership they found lots of defects and malfunctions such as diesel tank contamination, electric winch failure, broken aircon, engine problems and more. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy new but don't expect a new boat to be fault free. Before putting the money down, do some research and ask people who bought the same model a few months before you how the boat is doing and if the manufacturer has fixed any problems efficiently. Sure, some brand new boats don't have major problems, but do bear in mind that all boats need maintenance and fixing up, no matter how new. Things break and need fixing, it's just part of cruising and you won't be able to get away from that. One day you will find yourself in a remote area or a harbour with no services, having some sort of trouble and you'll need to deal with it. So if you can, 
Learn how to do your own boat work early on. It'll save you money, disappointments and time. Making money from a sailboat is pretty hard, no matter how you do it. It took us a while to fully realize this. If you work from a laptop, like us, it can be difficult to find new clients when old ones don't need you anymore because you can't go to networking events in your industry like you can do on land. If you rent property, some tenants can prove a challenge. You may need to fly home or pay for repairs more often than you'd like to. These costs can become significant after a while. The truth is that many sailors give up cruising because they run out of money a lot sooner than expected. You just don't hear about it on the news or on YouTube. We met plenty of people who couldn't make ends meet. We ourselves have struggled many times when a client didn't need our services anymore or another paid their invoice months late. Whatever you do to make money, it takes time, effort and planning to get it right. The best way to set yourself up is to have multiple income streams, so if one performs poorly, you still have some money coming in. The good news is that you don't need to make a ton of money to live on a small sailboat. Even with maintenance and insurance expenses, if you live frugally and avoid going to marinas, your yearly spending can be a lot cheaper than it was on land. Sailors are very opinionated when it comes to boats. People on full keel boats, like us, will tell you that they're the best blue water boats and you should choose one for crossing oceans. People who own a modern, light production boat will wow you with their expensive gadgets and ease of maneuvering into tight marina spaces. People with boats from the 90s will tell you that those were the last well-built boats. People with steel boats will convince you that they're the safest boats around as their hulls can sail through ice. People with catamarans will tell you that monohulls are cramped and rolly and what you really need to cross the Atlantic is a big, comfy production catamaran. Don't blame us, we all buy what we think is the best possible boat within our reach. So we need to justify our choices by telling everyone just how good our beloved boat is. Please don't mind us, make up your own mind. Do lots of research, find a school of thought that suits you and your budget and build your own opinion. And when other sailors challenge your choices, just let it go. You won't change their mind just like they won't change yours. Anyone can get seasick, even the toughest sea dog. It doesn't matter if you've never been nauseous before. In certain conditions that don't agree with your body, you can get seasick. Ryan had never been seasick before encountering a cross swell between Sardinia and Sicily. Yet, he stared at the bottom of a bucket for a full night, wishing he could jump ship. A couple of our friends who had sailed the Atlantic circuit every year for years in their retirement years without ever having trouble found themselves feeling heavily seasick both at the same time on a particularly rough crossing to the Canaries. You will get seasick at some point, so be prepared for it. Always keep in-date seasickness pills on board. I can tell you, it's such a terrible condition that you will wish you had bought a motor home rather than a boat for a brief moment, but once it's over, you will forget all about it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out our channel where we document our sailing adventures as honestly as we can, showing all aspects of boat life. We also have a playlist on how to become a liveaboard cruiser, which might come in handy for you. See you next time. Ready? Yeah.